So last week we spent a little time here on Red Feather Falls, and one of the things we did during our hunt was actually move a bear barrel to a new location, and today we're actually going to give that spot a try. So we actually have both bear barrels filled, and we're going to go to the old one first, just kind of to give the bears the most time to get to the new one. So we're going to head down here, we'll spend a little bit of time hunting there, and once we've maybe taken the best bear from that location, we'll go down and give the new one a try. So we made it in here without actually spooking the bears, and at least at first glance, there's nothing huge. They're all around the same size. So we have the heavy recurve, and the reason we went with it is it's a pretty quiet bow that still has really solid power. So if we can make the shots, which is definitely not a guarantee with a traditional bow, a lot of times the other bears aren't going to spook, so try this. We want to keep it like right up tight to the shoulder, because... The hitboxes on all the bear species are a little weird, and their lungs don't extend very far back. But if we can just do a little bit of that, we'll be all set here. I'm hoping this guy's gonna do kind of the same thing that looks like he is, but that is a really high score estimate for a pretty low weight for a black bear. Let's see if we can get him to stop. He should. And then, as we're losing our drop, I think we're probably single lung there. And that is, I can see lung blood there, but... That is the nice thing about using the heavy reeker and just in general using any kind of traditional bow at a bear barrel. If we make a really bad shot, they're going to run off and then actually come back. And if we make a decent shot, we can kind of just sit here and watch where they go. But even still, that one ran off and didn't even spook this other bear, which might be the best one. So hopefully he'll work his way in here now. So with the way this has went, I wanted to wait until this guy got good and close. And he's finally kind of doing that, so if he'll stop, we can do a little better with that. It definitely makes it nice having the barrel close, and the one that we have set up from before is a little farther away from the stand, so I can see that being a bit of an issue, but that guy's still walking around. That's kind of what I was waiting to see, so I thought he would bed down. But this guy's coming in, I think for the sake of trying to save on tracking time. We're going to go ahead and drop this one with the 30-odd 6. Might have hit a little far back on that one as well, but that'll go down a little quicker than the bow shot. Now we can go and claim everything and head off to the other barrel. We'll probably just hit him again for good measure. So I think this is the one I said was going to be potentially the biggest, and he's 20.1. I did, by the way, enter a competition for the biggest bear with a bow, and I've already shot a 22 for it, so... None of these are going to have a chance of being better than that, based on the estimates we saw. And I've been hunting the bears just a bit lately, just kind of enjoying hunting something that I used to hunt all the time. And it's been good to kind of get back to that. And actually, on top of that, we did a video a couple of weeks back where we just completed a bunch of missions and earned a bunch of GM. These guys are fantastic for that. Every decent-sized male is worth a good number. Like, this is probably below average at 17.7, at least for a male. And that's 64 CSS. I think it goes to 65 GM even. So they're really, really good for making them as well. And then the one that we did end up single lunging, we got shoulder blade and left lung, so it must have been close. And it was the second best one at 19.1. So like I said, this is probably closer to an average male, maybe just above, and still 80 CSS. So that might have been a good idea to track this guy down. He is max weight and max score estimate. And of course he just didn't come into the barrel. And naturally the competition running right now is that bow comp, so we gotta get in bow range, but with the heavy recurve. The nice thing is when bears are spooked like that, they spend a lot of time kind of just standing still and looking around. So crawling into 30 meters might not be the easiest thing, but we have the ideal camo for this. And let's see, the wind is not good, so let's reapply Send Eliminator. That might save us a little bit here. I'm pretty sure he's right here in front of us somewhere. Yeah, I can definitely hear him. The thing is, I don't actually know if he's coming this way or not. Like, I can hear his footsteps, but there's no guarantee he's actually walking back at us. I mean, it does sound like he's getting closer, but I at least want to get up here. He is right there, though. If he'll just sit still a second. That will be good enough. It's probably intestines. I don't know if we're... If 
for the competition. Allowed to take a second shot? Not that we're gonna get a chance to. Well, that's not how I thought that was gonna go, but yeah, uh, bear hitboxes are a little bit weird, and right behind the shoulder like that is an intestine shot, but that'll bring him down. Just gonna have to wait maybe like 10 minutes before we go track him. Well, he really didn't go all that far, like maybe 150 meters? He just looks just massive though, he's got like a huge head, which is exactly of course what we're looking for, so hopefully this is the one. That shot looks perfect, but of course the bear hitbox as I mentioned is a little bit odd. 277 kg, stomach shot by the way, 23.031, finally a 23 plus for our trophy lodge after how long have trophy lodges been out in classic? Forever approximately it feels like, but that's going to actually put us in third for that comp. It may stay there? We'll have to see because there's not a ton of time left in it, but I'm just so stoked to see that 23 come up. We must have had a good 10 minutes of rain here to set up this trophy shot, but I like what we got going on. I'm waiting for that shadow to get off of our face there. I think we'll take it there. I like how you do have some of the shadows and stuff though. It just feels like more into like the area where a monster bear like that might live. But to take that with a heavy recurve and, at least for the moment, get into top three, we're definitely going to send that to the Trophy Lodge. And, I mean, yeah. Finally, a 23+. plus. I talked about it last week. We've got a 30+, plus Polar Bear, a 27+, plus Grizzly, a 28+, plus Brown Bear, but we could not get that 23+, plus Black Bear, and some decent time spent here on Red Feather Falls, and we finally have one. So after all that, we're finally in our new bear spot, and I think we might have spooked some of the bears actually getting in here, but at least from the first couple I've seen, there's no huge ones, which doesn't come as a huge surprise given we just shot a 23 up at the other area. But there's a couple of decent sized males, and we did set this one up more for like compound bows or crossbows, so we're probably gonna do kind of the same thing we did at the other barrel and wait till they kind of wander our way. Cause I mean, 25-ish meters isn't too bad for the heavy recurve, but out there where the barrel is like 30 and a little beyond, that gets kind of tough. So we'll sort of see. Maybe this one as it's walking in? If we can make a good shot, the other shouldn't actually spook. That's kind of what we want to have happen. So if they'll eventually work their way up here, we should be pretty fine to take everything. Now, I don't know if they're doing this because of the shot or... If there's a bigger bear coming in, try to get that into like a neck bone or a spine, but I think it was actually a body hit. Now the nice thing is what I said earlier at the barrel, if that's a poor hit, and I'm pretty sure that's just body blood, eventually that bear will just come back. So we can either hit it again, or if it does start to come back, it might just bed and eventually uh, expire like somewhere not far away. So it's not too big a deal to take riskier shots like that. This does just sort of happen where two bears come back at the same time. Because if we spook some before, they're going to end up kind of calming down at the same time. And then naturally they'll just end up back here sort of together. But as long as we can do more of that kind of stuff, I think we'll be alright. I don't want to be tracking too many. These are actually both decent size. And assuming that this guy's not going to just go trotting at us for no reason, I think we'll be in pretty decent shape to maybe drop him as well. The one thing is kind of getting drawn back at the right time, because they don't stay stopped for long. Hopefully he's gonna stop here in a second. Had to get that shot off quick because we we're gonna start to lose our draw, but because we're using a traditional bow and the arrows are pretty slow moving, we really don't need them trying to take a step right as we take our shot because it ends up way far back. It didn't exactly go great the last time one walked kind of right under us like this, but this guy's coming back as well. We gotta keep this kind of lowish. That'll work. And that's the one that we hit poorly before. So I think we'll wait on it, even though this one here is kind of decent size as well. This guy's got a better estimate anyway, so hopefully, because I think he is kind of calmed down, he'll eventually sort of work his way around a little closer to us. I do like our odds though, just in this location going forward. Because there's a ton of bears around here, they continue to just keep coming in as we're sitting here. That guy still hasn't gotten any closer. 
But we also have a blacktail buck coming in. He's somewhere pretty close to us. Oh, he's actually underneath us now. 155 to 180. So he's going to be probably 160s. Let's see if we can do this correctly. Quite often, for some reason, with the blacktail, I struggle to actually drop them with any kind of bow. But that guy definitely didn't hear it. He's still kind of just hanging around at that, like, 30 meter range, though, so... Hopefully he'll kind of get closer. This might be about as good a chance as we're going to get, because he's been pretty determined to hang back right at the barrel. Going to be tough. Probably going to be a lung, though. I hope so. And there was even one other bear starting to come in. I just want to make sure we get that spotted. That's just a little female. And I think that's the one we just shot. So at that, I think we're going to call it good from this barrel. I still hear something... Just a black-tailed doe walking back there. But I did want to actually spend some time deer hunting. And especially after all that tracking the 23. We've been here for quite a while. But we have a decent number of bears down. I don't think any were that special. But again, going back to what I said earlier. And actually adding a good-sized black-tailed buck into the mix. We're going to make quite a lot of GM from this. And that's the nice thing about having the barrel really in either of our two locations. Both are good for black-tail. And black-tail, no matter the size give really, really good GM as well. So we can make a ton just sitting here bow hunting stuff. I think though we have three yet to claim. I also don't remember which was the best. We had a 19.5 there. This was, I think, a smaller male over here. The only blonde bear we've actually seen on this hunt and really isn't anything that special at 17. Then there's the one over on this side and I think that is going to be it for them. So. We'll get him collected and probably start hunting around a little bit for a whitetail. I just often when I'm bear hunting don't go and look for them. And I always wonder if there's any, you know, 200 scoring typicals or big non tips or anything like that on the map. So I at least want to give it a look. I almost didn't even turn around when this guy called. I just decided to look and he's 195 to 220. Definitely one of the better moves we've seen in a while. And if we can just kind of get him in here, hopefully we can go ahead and drop him with the recurve. Not the most ideal situation, but it's not a terrible angle as long as he doesn't try to flee. Probably going to be a little above the heart, but should be a long shot. And as long as it is, which blood looks good, he's not going to run too far. And I mean, not a white tail, he's actually going down right there. But a pretty good way to start out hunting around for some white tail. He definitely looks like he should be a decent amount over 200. We actually even double lunged him there. And he is going to be 211, so best one in probably a couple of months anyway. And it's still one of my favorite ways to take trophy shots of moose with this uh, trophy shot pose. Got the bow kind of just leaning in his antlers there. And I know we have three bigger than that in the trophy lodge, so not going to taxonomize him, but not a bad bull at all down here. Not even looking for him. Like I said, I almost didn't even turn around when he called. I don't think we're going to get away with this. And we'll be lucky if we can even get a shot off. But I thought that guy was going to sleep. Because he just wasn't coming in. And then we sort of started going over here. And we have marked like the place that he called from. So we were sitting back there in the tower. And he wouldn't have had to come that far before he last called to be in view. Luckily though, he didn't spook. And maybe he even was napping for like a little while. But eventually he just sort of walked right by us there. And I actually forgot there was a whitetail comp running. But that's not going to put us anywhere near the top. So far at least it's kind of looking like the moose is the best thing down here. There's got to be a good sized buck hanging out somewhere. But we actually have two different whitetail bucks coming in. And both are kind of unimpressive. So we'll get that guy dropped. The other is not too far out that way. We might actually have time to crawl down here and claim our smaller one. I mean, barely. He's getting here kind of quick. And we kind of lucked out here with the lung liver stomach shot, because he definitely could have run off. Even though I don't think he necessarily would have run towards this guy and spooked him. Still good to drop him and have him just not run anywhere at all. Hopefully we can kind of do the same thing here. I think there's something coming in behind us as well. We're also out of tracer arrows, so we're going to have to use our pack of normal ones, but that's just a doe, so we came from that direction. I'm not worried about spooking her back that way. 
So just to maybe save on arrows and the fact that you don't make any GM from shooting the does anyway, we might as well let her go. And this guy again, single lung, liver, and stomach, so we've kind of lucked out with our drop shots. So I guess it shouldn't be all that surprising. I mean, a hunt that lasts over three hours, the whitetail could be anywhere, and we went for a pretty decent walk here and made a loop around back to the lodge. And after those last couple of bucks, there were just a bunch of does, but we do gotta get in here and place our black bear, and I think we're gonna end up taking down a polar bear for that, but after such a long wait of trying to get a 23 plus black bear, it's definitely worth it in my mind. And I don't even know that it really hit me when we got him, but he is the common fur type with like the white patch on the chest. I just think those are really cool, and ever since the black bears got like new models, I think the common fur type is probably the best, like the cinnamon and the chocolate fur type and the blonde, they're all kind of like a little bit off. But the commons actually look pretty good, so I think we lucked out there, even if it is a 23.031. Just pretty much the minimum to reach 23 and be over that threshold. Still 23 plus, and after years of trying to get one, it's nice to finally see that in the lodge. So that was good. Getting a 211 moose in the process, definitely not bad as well. As far as whitetail, not too much was going on, but this of course was the main goal there, and we finally got that accomplished. But anyway... I think that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.